Hey everyone, uh, my name is Zach, I play guitar for Shiloh, and today I'm going to talk to you about some of my gear. Alright, so first I'm going to talk about some guitars that I have here. Um, uh, this one here on uh, the left hand side is probably my most used uh, instrument um, when playing with Shiloh. Um, it's a uh, 2008 Gibson SG um, and it was actually a, a gift of, that was given to me several years ago by some, some really amazing friends. Um, I had talked about how I really wanted an SG, but wasn't really looking for a humbucker sort of sound. I really wanted like a, like a P90 or single coil sort of tone from it. Um, and so a buddy of mine found this guitar, uh, did a lot of work to it, and actually installed some um, Duncan uh, Fat Cat uh, P90 pickups um, that fit perfectly in there and really kind of give a good balance of um, the chimey warm tone, but also still have like a, a thick sound to it. So um, for bigger moments in our songs, um, it still kind of holds up in that way. Um, definitely one of the, the smoothest playing instruments that um, I've ever played and toured with. It's just a workhorse. It does what it does very well. Um, and right here is actually a new guitar that I just a couple of days ago got done, finished building. Um, it's a Squire body. It's the Ter uh, Paranormal Tele series. Uh, and as you can see, the neck is a little bit different. This is an aluminum neck by Bagale. Bagale is a German company that I believe started around two, uh, 2020 and um, have just been making solid aluminum necks for the past couple of years. Uh, I have a bass with one of their necks on it and um, after playing that, I really wanted to get one for guitar. So just got this in um, and there's uh, some uh, upgraded pickups in here. Um, the stock ones that come with Squires are very basic, you know, cheap ceramic pickups, but uh, I installed some Duncan uh, quarter pounds in there. Um, and quarter pounds are kind of perfect for what I'm looking for from this Telecaster uh, because it is a thicker sort of sound. So it, again, it's, it's a little chimier, but it also still has the body whenever we need it to get heavy. Um, and I've always been a fan of offset bodies. I've just never, never owned one before. And honestly, the reason why I went with this is the shell pink. The, the color just kind of got me when I saw it. So just a newer build of mine, but um, I'm looking forward to using it in the future. So next I'm going to talk about my amp and my guitar cabinet. Uh, the amp that I normally use is this uh, VT22, actually, Ampeg head. Um, it used to be a combo uh, from the V4 series from the late 70s from uh, Ampeg that uh, somebody along the way uh, ended up ripping out of the combo unit and rehoused in this housing unit. Um, effectively, schematically, it's the exact same as the late 70s uh, V4s. Um, so anyone who knows old Ampeg knows that they're just loud and clean and take pedals very well. So for practical use in Shiloh, it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, we need the volume and we also need the headroom. Um, and uh, honestly, this, this head has just been, um, I know a lot of people uh, who I've talked to about the, the V4 series have had problems with them along the ways. They can uh, often be uh, like coined as uh, fragile amps. Um, so a lot of people don't like touring with them, but I've rarely had any issues with this one. There's been a couple of, uh, you know, broken uh, fuses and I've had to retube it once, but other than that, um, I just really love this amp. Um, gets exactly the, the sort of sound that I want, but also is very versatile. Um, so it's it's not uh, it's it's not pigeonholed in, in the sort of tone that it can get, which is great for when we're writing or when we're recording. Um, just all around solid, solid amp. Um, next is the uh, guitar cabinet that I have been using for the past couple of years. Uh, this is an Emperor GT 412. Um, it's their oversized offset uh, 412. Um, and again, for our style of music and really just for any loud uh, you know, bands, uh, having something a little beefier like an Emperor Cab um, is great because uh, you get really nice thick tone um, and uh, they're just you know, really, really well made, good for touring, just solid cabs all the way around. Um, in this particular cabinet, Again, it's a 412. I have uh, two different sets of um, speakers in here. I've got two uh, Eminence Swamp Things and then two uh, Eminence Governor um, speakers, and uh, I really love them. Um, the Governors definitely get um, a lot more um, uh, like 
like really cool breakup to them. So it's a really it's a really nice uh, combination of, of speakers to have running paired with the uh, the V4. I like it a lot. All right, so this is my current uh, pedal board setup. Um, I, unlike some other members in the band, have a tendency to kind of figure out what works and keep it the same for a very long time. This is uh, essentially um, the same sort of configuration of pedal board that I've had for years, pretty much since the band has started, just with nicer pedals and um, some slightly different features here and there. Um, so. Uh, first off, I've always been a fan of flat pedal boards. Um, never been a big fan of, of the tiered uh, business. Um, for me, it's just easier to, to just have it all one layer. Um, and uh, I don't know, for, for you know pl playing and practicality sake, it just is easier for me than having a, a tiered step up system. But um, so I guess going from going from right to left and kind of following the signal chain here, I've got um, the uh, Dunlop uh, mini volume pedal. Um, really love this pedal. For the longest time I was using Ernie Ball Juniors um, and they do a really great job but as anyone who uses those know uh, eventually the string will give out and break and more often than not it's in an inopportune time. Um, so I like this pedal a lot. Very small, does the, does the job really well. Next uh, I have a Polytune uh, 3 which is by TC Electronic. Um, again, with a flat board and just the, the type of configuration that I have, I need a tuner that's going to be small. Um, really like this tuner, really accurate, um, and uh, yeah, it doesn't take up too much space. Um, next is the Exotic EP Booster, um, and this is a pedal that I have on at all times. Um, I don't ever, uh, you know, turn, turn the knob up at all. It's literally down as far as it can go and just on. Um, on the inside of the pedal, there's uh, some internal dip switches where you can change the high and low cut. Um, and I keep it all the way down and on all the time just because it kind of helps me clean up my tone a little bit. Um, and I just really like having it on. It's just a, like, a, like a tone cleaner, essentially. And that's fed into the uh, Fuzz Rocious Demon. Um, Fuzz Rocious is a uh, boutique company that's uh, from New Jersey. It's a husband and wife duo and their kids help out uh, sometimes. Um, Ryan has been making pedals for, for years now and uh, most of his pedals are, are kind of drives, fuzzes, distortions, and he just does it really, really well. Um, it's kind of a take on the, uh, the, uh, the OCD, but um, the one that I have here actually has a boost and gate mod, which I love uh, for any of our heavy parts, um, especially things that have a lot of st uh, stopping and starting, the, uh, the, the boost and the gate uh, built into this pedal really help make those cuts clean, um, really give it some extra oomph to it as well. Um, so this is my go-to drive. Um, so that is fed into the next uh, gain stage that I have, which is the Earthquaker Devices Spires. Um, this is a, a two-channel fuzz. Um, and uh, the right side, uh, which is the red side, has more of a um, uh, like a vintagey rat sort of fuzz sound to it. And the left side, which is the green channel, uh, which is the one that I use most of the time, is um, I think it was the uh, it was modeled after the new fuzz from I think from the 70s. Um, really, it's just a splattery kind of gross, thick fuzz. Um, and I'll use this kind of in sparing moments across our, uh, our songs just for those really big, just gross, heavy parts, um, just because it adds that extra uh, sort of fizzle and, and grit to things. And uh, then from there, I start to get into my delay and modulations, which uh, goes into uh, the Strymon Flint. Uh, the Flint's just an all around great, you know, reverb, always on sort of reverb. Um, I typically use it in the um, the 80s uh, the 80s setting, which I think is like a like a plate setting. Um, I really like the color sweep knob a lot. You can get really bright, crisp uh, trails, or you can make them really dark. I typically keep them a little darker, um, especially when using anything with single coils in it. Um, and then on the left side, there's actually a tremolo, which I don't use too much, but on our newest record, I used a, a few times, which I think um, just kind of helps, you know, add in an extra element. Um, and it's there, so why not use it? Um, but all around, really great, solid pedal. And that's fed into another Strymon pedal, the, uh, the Big Sky, 
Um, for me, this is one of my favorite pedals. Um, really gets, you know, all sorts of, you know, your standard reverbs, but also crazy modulation. Um, there's just some really cool algorithms that they've they put in here um, that just sound really amazing. And um, to be quite honest, I don't use it to its full capacity, but um, the sounds that I've pre-built and set for certain elements in our songs, I really like. So um, just really gives that extra space and body to, to some of the parts uh, in a lot of our songs. So um, yeah, great pedal, great pedal. Um, next is uh, a new, the newest pedal that's on my board, which is the Pigtronics Echolution. Um, and for the longest time, I was running a Moore uh, delay. Um, it was the Re-Echo. And it's a kind of a cheap pedal, but it did the job. Um, and the biggest thing, again, considering uh, what I have to work with real estate wise, it was perfect. It was just like a, a perfect fit. So, um, and there wasn't really another pedal that I could find that would fit and do everything that I wanted to do in this space. But this recently came out, um, picked it up on a whim, um, uh, maybe a few months ago, and it is amazing. I love it a lot. There's four presets built into it, uh, which makes, you know, Whenever we change our set, I can you know program that in there. Um, really amazing modulation um, built into it as well. There's some really cool octave jumping features, which I haven't really gotten into yet, but uh, I'm gonna try to explore for, for the next time we uh, start really writing. Um, and uh, yeah, just all around great delay pedal. And that's fed into the big monster, uh, the DL4. Um, you know, a lot of folks are really, uh, a lot of guitar players are really familiar with this pedal. Um, I love this pedal a lot. I got into using DL4s uh, by watching um, uh, Minus the Bear. I know he had like, uh, the, David Newson had four of them at one point. Just a really cool pedal. Um, at this point, what I'm using it for on the board is really just the looping function. Um, it's uh, just a great way to kind of ha add extra layers to certain parts. Um, it also has some really cool oscillation uh, uh, delays to it, so I like to use that for textural moments if in between transitions and stuff like that. Um, but as you can see, I painted mine black. I got really tired of seeing the, uh, the green, the Hulk green, just staring up at me. So years ago, I just decided to take some sandpaper to it and then started painting it black. But um, And then lastly, that's fed into the RC3 loop station. Um, the loop station I don't really use that much anymore. At some point in the next couple of months, it'll probably come off the board and get replaced with something else. But um, I was using this to trigger uh, like uh, transitional backing tracks for our live sets. Um, but at this point, what I mainly use it for in, in a day-to-day -day capacity is just a, a writing tool, just to, to be able to, to loop parts. So I, you know, happen to come up with something. And I just want to hear how it sounds with a layer on top of it. So. And then, sort of lastly, I've got uh, this kind of stacked thing going on. Um, underneath is the Zuma, which is just Strymon's power supply. Um, it has exactly enough uh, power outlets for, for what I'm looking for. Um, and uh, for whenever we travel, especially when we travel overseas, um, uh, it's just really easy to use for uh, power conversion. I don't have to worry about getting a like a converter, or like anything like that. It's just a, a great um, power supply that does the job. And then on top, which is last in my chain, is this momentary kill switch by Saturn. Saturn works. Um, it uh, you know it helps for um, you know certain certain ends of songs where I just need to really like cut um, all audio going to it. Especially if I have a lot of reverbs and delays going on, I can just instantly you know with a single button just kill it all. So. Um, so yeah, that kind of wraps up my board. Uh, once again, I'm Zach from Shiloh. Uh, this is my rig. Thanks so much for coming to watch.